We need one time pins for user email verification, resetting forgotten passwords, among others. So let's create a general purpose system for generating the pins, sending them via email, and verifying them. In this project, we'll classify the OTP system as a domain, so we create a directory for it. Here, we'll handle all the routes and functionalities. To start, we need to define a structure for the OTP data, so we create a model for it. Here, we import the Mongoose package we installed earlier and target the schema class. Now, we create a new schema to describe the structure of the OTP data. The first property will be an email, which will be a string and a unique property. This will refer to the user for whom the OTP is to be generated. Next, we add the one time pin itself and this will be a string as well. Also, we want to store the data on when it was created and when it will expire, both of which will be dates. Now we use Mongoose to create the OTP model based on the schema and export it. Now we move on to requesting and generating a one time pin. For the request, we need a route. So we create a route file in the OTP domain. Here we import the express package and initialize an express router. Using the express router, we create a post route for requesting an OTP using the root path. This will take an async route handler which will receive the request and response parameters. Now for requesting an OTP, the end goal we have is to send the value to the user as an email. So from the body of the request, we want to destructure some values for the email. These include the email of the user, subject and message describing the purpose of the pin and the duration for which the pin remains valid. Now in a controller file, we want to create a function that will generate and send the OTP. So over here, we will send the OTP in a simple async function. This will expect to receive the set of data that we got from the body of the request. For the duration, we want to give it a default value of 1 hour. To start, we make a quick check to ensure that our values are not empty. For the duration, it has a default value, so we don't need to check for that. If any of the values are empty, we throw an error with a message. Now at each point in time, we want to have just one OTP record associated with a particular email address. So at the beginning of each OTP creation, we want to delete any old record. To do that, we import the OTP model. Using the OTP model, we delete the record based on the email. At this point, we want to generate the pin to be sent. For this, we create a new utility. Over here, we generate the OTP in a simple async function. Now we return the OTP which will be a stringified result of a few calculations. Our goal here is to get a 4 digit pin. So using the math.random function, we multiply it by 9000 to get a random number between 0 and 9000. This can be less than 4 digits, so we add 1000 to maintain the 3 digits. Math.random can give us decimal values, so we flood the value to a whole number. If you want to have more than 4 digits, just add more zeros in equal quantity to the 9000 and the 1000. If we catch any error while doing this, we throw it back to the colon function. And at the bottom, we export the function. Now back in the controller file, we import the generate OTP function. We then call it to generate a new pin for us. Having the pin like so, we want to send the email to the user. Now for the email functionality, we want to dedicate a utility to that. Over here, we import the node mailer package we installed earlier. This will help us to send the emails. Now we create a node mailer transporter for the emails. This will take a host value and we pass the SMTP mail from Outlook. Outlook because it's more reliable than Gmail when you want to use it in production. Also to take an auth property which requires an email and password. For this, I highly recommend using a Hotmail account. You can easily create one by visiting the Outlook website and choosing to create a Hotmail account. For the values, we want to define them in the .env file. 
Now back in the send email file, we import our credentials from process.env. We then pass them to the transporter under the user and pass keys. With that done, we test the transporter. Here we call the verify method and pass it a callback function. The function will receive the error and success parameters. If an error occurred, we log it to the console. Otherwise, if it's fine, we log a success message as well. Now we send the actual email in a simple async function. This will receive the options for the email as a parameter. Using the transporter, we send the email with the options received and return. If an error occurred, we throw it back. And finally, we export the function. With this Outlook setup, you should keep an eye on your inbox after sending the first few emails. Usually, you'll be prompted to verify your account via email and then you can send unlimited emails after that. Now back in the controller, we import the send email function. We get ready for the email by preparing the mail options. The first property will be where the email originates from and that will be our hotmail address. So we import it from process.env and pass it to the options. Next, we set where the email will be sent to and this will be the user's email address. Also, we pass the subjects of the email we received. And then we pass an HTML property which will allow us to style the body of the email. So in a string, we pass the message received in a paragraph. In another paragraph, we apply some styling and pass the generated OTP. In a final paragraph, we set a message about the expiry and pass the received duration. With this done, we send the email with the mail options. Now we save the OTP record in our database. First, we want to avoid storing the OTP in plain text, so we hash it. The hash data utility we created earlier will help us, so we import it. This makes use of Bcrypt to hash the past data. We get the hashed OTP by passing the OTP to the hash function. Once we have that, we create a new OTP record and pass the email and OTP. In addition, we set the time of creation with the current date. Also, we calculate and set the expiry date. For this, we convert the received duration to milliseconds and add it to the current date. Putting plus in front of the duration will cast it to an integer value if it isn't already. Now we save the new OTP and return the created record. In case of any error, we throw it. And at the bottom, we export the function in an object. Now back in the route file, we import the function for sending the OTP. We create and send the OTP by passing all the data we received from the body of the request. After that, we finally respond to the request and pass the OTP record. If any error was thrown, we respond to it in the catch block and pass the message. Once we are done, we export the router. Now we need to take a series of steps to expose the OTP routes to the server app. Starting in the OTP domain, we create an index file. In this file, we import the OTP routes and export it again. Next, in the source routes directory, we visit the index file and import the OTP routes. Now we tell the router to assign the OTP path to the OTP routes. In the main app file, we've already imported and assigned all the routes, so we are done here. With the server still up and running, we create a post request in Postman and pass the OTP request endpoint. Now we set the body of the request to JSON and pass a typical OTP request data. If everything goes well, we should receive the created OTP data. Checking your inbox as well, you should see an email with a one-time pin. This works fine so we can save and commit the changes in our code. We will build on this to see how to verify the provided OTP in the next part. You can take a shortcut and access the full source code with the link in the description.